Hi, my name is Rachel Jackson, and this short video pertains to neonatal hypertension. Neonatal hypertension is relatively uncommon, affecting less than 3% of infants in the NICU. Risk factors for neonatal hypertension include maternal hypertension or maternal diabetes, low birth weight, having a UAC placed, and diagnosis of bronchopulmonary dysplasia or intraventricular hemorrhage, also acute or chronic renal failure or congenital anomalies of the kidneys and urinary tract. And we also have medications such as steroids, endomethacin, vasopressors, bronchodilators, and um, antenatal steroid exposure, which are also considered risk factors for neonatal hypertension. Most patients do not exhibit the usual signs of hypertension that the older children do, and symptoms and signs are often difficult to differentiate from those of concurrent medical conditions, such as cardiorespiratory failure, feeding difficulties, irritability, and GI symptoms. Although the American Academy of Pediatrics does not recommend routine blood pressure evaluation in healthy term neonates, Blood pressure measurements are important in infants admitted to the NICU because these patients are at higher risk for hypertension. It's important to standardize the method by which blood pressure is measured in young infants in order to discriminate between normal blood pressure and hypertension using the data that we have from clinical studies which have been published. Although invasive arterial blood pressure monitoring remains the gold standard, especially in our critically ill neonates, non-invasive methods using the oscillometric devices are commonly used in most NICUs. The most recent studies published now use the latter method, making their data more clinically relevant and usable for the bedside clinicians. A standardized method for non-invasive blood pressure measurement in infants using an oscillometric device is depicted on this slide. Um, first, the infant should be prone or supine, and the proper cuff size will be a width to arm circumference ratio of 0 0.45 to 0 0.70 and always use the right upper arm for all measurements, and that is key. Um, timing is super important as well. The patient should be asleep, or if they're awake, they should be quiet. And it's really good to ensure that the neonate has not been disturbed for at least 15 minutes after the cuff is placed before you take the blood pressure readings. And feeding or medical intervention should have been at least an hour to an hour and a half before the measurement. If you can get more than one measurement, that's great. Um, they recommend that you try to obtain at least three readings two minutes apart, but I know that's not always possible. The procedure we just discussed minimizes factors shown here, which may artificially increase blood pressure, such as feeding, and that can actually increase the blood pressure by 20 millimeters of mercury. Also crying, or if the neonate's head is tilted or kept up, or if they're sucking on a pacifier, all these things may artificially increase blood pressure. Sleeping infants may have a systolic blood pressure that is five millimeters of mercury lower than in infants who are awake, but it's still recommended to measure blood pressure while the infant is asleep. As of right now, there are no comprehensive data defining normal blood pressure values in preterm and term neonates. Several studies have been performed to determine the norms, but almost all have major drawbacks or they use different methods of blood pressure me measurement, which limits our ability to compare the data between the studies. So the generally accepted definition of hypertension in newborns is derived from older children in whom systolic and or diastolic blood pressure values are persistently greater than or equal to the 95th percentile for their height, age, and sex, and that's what they describe as hypertension. A newborn is diagnosed with hypertension if the systolic and or the diastolic blood pressure readings on three separate occasions are at or above the 95th percentile for their post-conceptual age. Some reasonable systolic blood pressures, which you may consider average, are shown here. Systolic blood pressure is shown on the y-axis and gestational age in weeks is shown on the x-axis. In general, systolic blood pressure increases with age and it's not abnormal for a 26-weeker to have a systolic blood pressure around 40 millimeters of mercury. Some reasonable diastolic blood pressures, which you may consider average, are shown here on this graph. Diastolic blood pressure is shown on the y-axis again, and gestational age in weeks is shown on the x-axis. In general, diastolic blood pressures also increase with age, and it's not abnormal for a 26-weeker to have a diastolic blood pressure around 25 millimeters of mercury. 
So you may be wondering now, um, when do we decide to initiate treatment or what treatment do we initiate in patients that do have hypertension? Well, first, reversible and treatable factors contributing to the hypertension should be appropriately addressed prior to the initiation of antihypertensive medications. Um, the thing, another thing you should consider are the risk factors that we've discussed. Decisions regarding the need for umbilical arterial catheters, use of potential nephrotoxins, especially like aminoglycosides and NSAIDs, such as endomethacin. Those all should be carefully considered in NICU infants, weighing the risks and benefits of those things since they're all considered risk factors for neonatal hypertension. After you address the non-pharmacological things that we just discussed, it really still remains unclear when to initiate antihypertensive therapy because the data pertaining to outcomes of untreated versus treated hypertension are really lacking. Most neonates require antihypertensives for only a short period, with only a small minority requiring long-term therapy. So treatment of hypertension should be individualized depending on the severity and etiology. In general, severe or symptomatic hypertension should be treated with IV agents, and then milder hypertension can be treated with oral medications. The most commonly used agents are vasodilators like hydralazine, um, ACE inhibitors, and calcium channel blockers. Other classes of agents that can be used include an alpha or beta adrenergic agonist, diuretics, and central alpha agonist. ACE inhibitors should be avoided in preterm infants and those with acute renal failure and also those with hyperkalemia. When indicated, most neonates require antihypertensives only transiently with longer term therapy required by those with underlying renal or renovascular abnormalities. Thank you so much for watching my video.